So one of the announcements last week at Google Next was the ability to create custom voice models using Chirp 3. So I decided I was going to give it a try using the Google Media Studio on the Google Cloud Console. So I'm going to jump in here. I'm using Vertex AI and I'm using Media Studio. I'm going to jump into audio. And over here we see I've got Chirp 3, HD Voices, English Language, and then here are all the new voices that are in preview. But if I scroll down to the very bottom, there's an option here to add a custom voice. So let's see what how we do this. Now, there's going to be a few hiccups along the way because it wants them in a very specific format and things like that. And I just used a generic audio recorder. But I'm going to show you how I actually got in the right format so you can give this a try yourself. So I'm going to add a custom voice here. I'm going to say it's going to be Grant. We'll call it Grant version one. And it says here, upload any sample of your speaking in normal conversational tone for best results include at least 10 seconds. Okay, so I've actually got this file. Uh, I've got a file here and we're going to try for my raw file. I did a 30 second sample. So I'm going to put that in there. And they also said I need to record and upload me speaking the following statement. No, I'm not going to speak that statement to you because then you could copy my voice. But you must read that. And so I put that into a file. So I've got my grant consent file. And I can say generate the voice. And let's see what happens. First try. Okay, it's thinking about it. And we'll get a little error here in a minute. Fail. Failed to parse the reference audio, the invalid sample rate. It only supports 24 kilohertz samples. Okay, we can resolve that with a tool uh, to convert by audio. It's probably recorded at 44 kilohertz. So I use a tool called WavePad. And this is the audio file that I actually recorded as my sample. So let's grab that. I'll play just a little bit for you here. Welcome to ROI Training, Google Cloud's Global Partner of the Year for 2025. My name's Grant, and I'm going to... Okay, so that's my audio file that I've got. And using WavePad Editor, comes out of NCH software here. What I can do down here is we can actually see the properties of my audio. Its sample rate is 44 kilohertz, stereo, and all that. But what I can do is actually click on it. That's what's cool about this tool, is I'm going to change that to a sample rate of 24 kilohertz instead. And I'm going to convert it. Now, it's going to say, hey, you're... You're going to be reducing the sample rate, so you could lose some quality out of it. But, hey, the tool expects it to be at 24 kilohertz. So there we go. So I could save that. And I've actually done that. So let's go try this again. So I'm going to change out my file. And I've created it. I've converted it. And I made a grant 30-second sample at 24 kilohertz. And let's see what happens. Now, uh, I'm not going to change the consent file just yet because I want to see if it yells at me about that. Let's see what we get. Ah, failed to parse the reference invalid number of channels. It found two channels and it expects a mono 24 kilohertz. Okay, so let's. that's okay because in my audio tool here, I was able to get on here and I see I'm at 24 kilohertz, but stereo, and I'm going to convert that to mono. And I'm going to convert it and then I would save it and I've got that file ready to go. So I'm going to pop back here. I'm now going to choose my... Grant 30 second sample, 24 kilohertz mono wave file. And let's see what happens. So we're gonna generate our voice. Now, remember up here it says for best results, well, oh, for best results use 10 seconds. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Now my consent file, I have to do the same thing too, by the way. So by consent file, that's why it yelled at me. So it seemed okay with that, but this one here, a little bit, uh, upset, so I've made a grant consent 24 kilohertz mono file. And now let's see what happens. So we're going to generate the voice. Now remember, that says for best results, include at least 10 seconds. Reference audio too long. Current reference audio length is 32 seconds, which exceeds the maximum length of 10 seconds. Okay, that's a little mutually exclusive, uh, at least 10 seconds. And when I give it more than 10 seconds, but that's okay. So what I did is I used my editor in here and I just went in and I chomped out about 10 seconds of it. So I was able to use the tool here uh, and kind of chomped out 10 seconds worth of audio and made a 10 second sample. So that's what this tool came in really handy for that. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to choose my 10 second sample. So 10 second sample, 24 kilohertz mono generated the voice. 
at it's doing its thing and look over here i now have the grant v1 voice so let's see how it did so i'm going to say this is a test this is only a test and we're going to hear it play back so generated that seems pretty quick this is a test this is only a test that's not too bad now let's go grab some real text from somewhere so let me just, I'm going to grab a tab here. I'm going to go grab some text. Let's, uh, all right. So let's grab, I'll bring the page down. I'm going to grab the Declaration of Independence. Okay. So we're going to read, have it read this. I'm going to copy this big block of text out of here. Uh, so we'll grab the first part of the Declaration of Independence. We're going to copy that. And we'll jump back over here. And I'm going to put the test text in here. And let's see how well the new Grant version one chatbot can read the Declaration of Independence. So I'm having it generate the audio. Oh, too long, considering splitting up long sentences. Okay, chunk it. That's probably a good idea. But you know what? I'm just going to go through and let's just chomp out some text. We'll, we'll give it maybe this first paragraph and let's give it part of this part. We'll take it down to about here. Should be fine. Let's just. I want to give it at least a decent amount of uh, text to generate. Oops, still too long. All right, let's go back a little bit farther. I tested this earlier, and it was able to handle it a little bit more. All right, we'll just go to there, and let's see what happens. There we go. Generating the audio. Now, it says several minutes, but it's fast. So I got 30 seconds worth of audio here. And... Behind the scenes, what you would do is you would actually program this. So you would use um, uh, some Python. You'd do your quick training by feeding it in your two audio files. You got your audio and your approval file, and then go through and use that voice and chunk out your code, maybe each sentence or things like that, and convert it and then combine it together. But let's see what happens. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. NWE hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unable... Now, that's pretty amazing for a seven-minute demo. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Go play with uh, Chirp 3 and try out that custom voice stuff. As I said, it looks like there's still little quirks and things like that that have to be uh, worked out. Uh, my next task is I'm going to go back and try to build a little Python uh, code to actually do that. Now that I've got sort of I know I've got my training file, you know, so with my voice and also my approval file. And I'm going to give it a try to do it programmatically. But just as a quick demo here. A uh, few things, I didn't figure out how to export it. There doesn't seem to be where I could export that uh, audio or anything like that, but that's going to be back on the programming side. So the thing when you're working with Workbench like this in uh, Vertex AI and working with the tools, you're really about experimenting with the project, understanding how it goes, but really it's meant to be programmed back behind the scenes via an API. Thanks for watching.